A constitutional isomer differs by the very constitution or the way the atoms are attached in this molecule. For example, if I have a molecule with the molecular formula of C4H10, this molecule can exist as a straight chain of CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, or it can also exist as CH3, CH, CH3, with a CH3 branch coming off of it. If you count up the atoms in each one, I have one, two, three, four carbons, and one, two, three, four carbons. Counting the hydrogens, three, six, eight, ten, three, six, nine, ten. The only difference is the first one is written as a straight chain, four carbons connected in a row. The second one is three carbons in a row with a branch coming off it. Now, when we're dealing with constitutional isomers, we're really looking at the carbons and how they're connected. So it's better to do this in line structure rather than spending the time to write out every carbon and every hydrogen. If you're not comfortable working with line structure, please refer back to my tutorial video and I will show you how to draw it, how to write it, and how to understand what these lines mean. So let's look back at the previous example. We used C4 H10, and I gave you the isomers, but now let's say you're asked to show the isomers. How do you tell the difference between something that is an isomer and something that is drawn in the same way? For example, we had a straight chain written out, but what if I decide to try an isomer that looks something like this? In line structure, that would look like a straight chain or one with a bend chain. While looking at it, it appears to be different. These two are actually the same exact molecule. So how do you tell the difference? Simple, just name your molecule. So I will start by numbering this one and notice that I can number four carbons in a row, which gives me a butane. And for the second one, when I number it, once again, I get four carbons in a row for butane. So I know it's the same thing. One more thing to consider before doing these problems. I said this video will be about alkanes, but say you're not sure. How do you know that the molecule in question is an alkane? Recall that the formula for an alkane is CnH2n plus 2. This means that if I have n number of carbons, then the hydrogens will be the number of carbons times 2 plus 2. Going back to my previous formula, we had C4H10. If if C is equal to 4, that means I have 4 carbons. To find the hydrogen number, that's n times 2, meaning 4 times 2 plus 2. That's 8 plus 2, which is 10, and that means I have 10 hydrogens in my formula for an alkane. What happens when you have less than 10 hydrogens? That's when we get into the concept of hydrogen deficiency and pi bonds and rings, which will be addressed in my next video on constitutional isomers. Let's try some practice problems. We'll start with a rather simple example, C5H12, and let's see how many isomers we can come up with. Again, if you're not sure if a molecule is the same, name the molecule. If the name is the same, then it's the same. Carbon is five, that means hydrogens should be two times five plus two, which is 10 plus two is 12, and we know we have an alkane. The trick to finding all or most of the isomers is to work methodically rather than randomly writing what comes to mind. The way to do this is starting with a straight chain and then slowly shortening your chain, adding branches and moving them from one side of the molecule to the other. The first structure that comes to mind obviously is the straight chain of five carbons. There are no substituents to move around, so that's the only five carbon straight chain isomer. The next isomer is going to have four carbons with one methyl substituent. If I put the substituent on carbon one and I name it, I have pentane for my supposed isomer, but this is the same thing. Instead, I will put the substituent on carbon number two. Now when I name it, my parent chain only has four carbons and I have a methyl substituent giving me two methyl butane. If I take this substituent and move it to carbon number three, it's actually just 2-methylbutane in reverse. 
because I number it from the side that reaches the substituent first and once again I get 2-methylbutane. So that's all I have for one branch on a 4-carbon chain. Now let's try a 3-carbon chain. For 3 carbons, the only place to, two, to put 2-methyl two substituents is on the center carbon. Numbering it, I have a parent chain of 3 with 2 methyls on carbon 2. This gives me 2 comma 2 dimethyl propane. Working our way up, let's try C6H14. The good news about these molecules is that as you increase the number of carbons, you increase the possible isomers. And professors will usually ask you to find the majority, but not every single isomer, so it's okay to miss one. Carbons, we have 6. That means hydrogens will be 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 2, 14. We have 14 hydrogens. We have an alkane. I will start with a straight chain of 6 carbons, giving me hexane, and then move on to branching. In this case, I actually have the opportunity to move my branches around. If I have 5 carbons, I can put the methyl substituent in multiple places. Putting a methyl substituent on carbon 1 will just give me another hexane, so that's no good. I can put a substituent on carbon 2 and carbon 3. If I put it on carbon 4, that's really just 2 from the other side, and carbon 5 is just 1 from the other side. I will draw my two 5-carbon chains with a methyl, methyl substituent, and then name it just to make sure that they're not the same molecule. For the first one, I have 2-methylpentane, and for the second one, I have 3-methylpentane. Next, I move on to a 4-carbon chain, and in order to reach C6, I have 2-methyl substituents. I have the option to place 1 on carbon 2 and 1 on carbon 3, or I can place 2 substituents on the same carbon. For the first one, I have 2,3-dimethylbutane. Then I can do 2,2-dimethylbutane. Two, now, be careful not to do a butane with an ethyl substituent because if you number this you actually get a 5 carbon chain with 1 methyl substituent which is the same as your 3 methyl pentane. Removing another carbon from the parent chain would give me 3 carbons. In this case however I need 3 methyl substituents in order to have 6 carbons and since I can only place 2 on the center carbon I would have to put my third carbon on a carbon that would increase the length of the chain. In this case, I have 2,2-dimethylbutane, which we already have. If I put it on the substituent itself, I now have 1, 2, 3, 4, again, 2,2-dimethylbutane. So for C6H14, we have a total of 5 isomers. Now let's try C7H16. Remember, as the number of carbons goes up, the number of isomers go up. So just be careful, try to get as many as you can, and name them to make sure you don't have duplicates. I won't be naming them as I draw them, otherwise they would fill the screen. And if I miss one or two, please don't hold it against me. There, there are a couple. I will start with the straight chain of seven carbons, and this is heptane. For the six carbon chain, I get one methyl substituent, and I can put that in position two, or position 3. Position 4 is the same as 3 and 5 is the same as 2. So I have 2-methylhexane and 3-methylhexane. For the 5-carbon chain, I get two substituents. I can put them together or separately. So I can have on 2 and 3. I can have them on 2 and 4. Or I can have them together on 2 or together on 3. Remember, together on 4 is the same as together on 2. For the first one, I put my substituents together on the second carbon, giving me 2,2-dimethylpentane. For the second one, I will have 3,3-dimethylpentane. Then I will separate them to give me 2,3-dimethylpentane. I'm going to squeeze this one in here for 2,4-dimethylpentane. And lastly, on a 5-carbon chain, I can also do an ethyl substituent since it won't extend the length of the chain. 
No matter how I count it, I hit three at the center, which means that it'll be three ethyl pentane. On a four carbon chain, I get three substituents and I can only put them as methyl substituents. If I do an ethyl, then I actually extend the length of the chain, giving me one, two, three, four, five, which is longer than the parent chain of four that I'm trying to do. So I can put my substituents only two on one and one on the other. I name it, I number it from the side that has the two methyl groups, which gives me two, two, three trimethyl butane. And that's all I can think of for C7H16. If you have additional questions, my website is leahforsci.com.